So as you can see, the adapter does work with this game, but there's an asterisk in there. Every single time I put it in, I get different results. Uh, usually it's a gray screen, sometimes it's a garbled screen like you guys saw in the previous video about the adapter. And every so often it'll just work. And I was messing around with it the other day, you know, kind of just trying different adjustments to the adapter, maybe leaving it not plugged in all the way, maybe most of the way, maybe leaving like a little bit of a millimeter gap or something like that. And when I tried that and installed it in the console, it worked just fine. So I figured, oh, I figured it out. Something with the pin orientation or something like that. Maybe this isn't deep enough and and it, you know, is needs to rest up against the back of the cartridge or something like that. And that's based on some research that I did uh, trying to figure out how to get these adapters to work with all games. And I only came up with a few posts basically saying, oh, you need to install some resistors and capacitors. And that's mainly for compatibility with MMC5 based games, as well as games that support the expanded audio, which no official game in the West did. They're mainly just for clone carts and repros and things like that. So the capacitor and the resistor thing isn't really going to help compatibility with this. But someone mentioned that they had to shave off a little bit of the top of their cartridge connector on the NES side for theirs to work with their games. Uh, did not want to do that just yet, uh, especially since it's destructive. So I figured, well, let me try pulling it out a little bit, you know, so it's not connected all the way. Thinking maybe there's something wrong with it. Maybe it's too deep or something like that. And so the cartridge connector itself, you know, goes too far down and it doesn't make proper contact. Maybe the spring tension on these aren't great. Not sure. Uh, but it worked once and then I could not reproduce it until just now. And I thought that maybe, just maybe it had something to do with the PCB layout of the, well, not the PCB layout, but the uh, spacing of the pins or maybe the type of pins. And I'll explain why in a second here. And that's because if you look at the cartridge itself, some of the pins don't go all the way down. The ground one does. These pins aren't even populated. The pins are here, but then they become this little thin line, maybe a millimeter in a width, but it's only on the one side. On the other side, they go all the way down. But the other thing that I notice is that the solder mask stops uh, roughly halfway down, whereas here the solder mask is maybe a tenth of the way. So I was a little confused by it, but I figured, well, maybe that has something to do with it. So I tried uh, installing it different orientations and shifting it over a little bit because you know these thinner parts of the connectors here might not be making full contact with the actual NES part of the uh, slot and uh, try different things and sometimes I can get it to work just by slightly shifting it sometimes I just had to insert it at an angle it's very inconsistent in fact right now you know just installing it the way I did I've got it working, but garbled graphics again. So, like I said, very inconsistent. Sometimes it'll just be a gray screen. Like right now, just a gray screen. So I took a look at Dragon Warrior. Another game did not work correctly with the adapter. And notice that this too has a similar story with the way the pins are and everything. So then I'm like, okay, well, what's going on there? Took a look at Bad Dude since that's one of the games that did work. And it, again, it is the exact same story. It's got these little finer areas of the pin, solder mask only covering roughly 10% of the actual connectors themselves. And I, to this, I still can't figure out why the adapter works with this every time, whereas with the other games, it's only random. So I was really thinking, hoping that I'd have a follow-up to this that would guarantee that uh, a way to get at least most of your games working, if not every single one of them, and I don't, and that's unfortunate. Like right now, I just put Bad Dudes, the PCB by itself in. Seems to work every single time. Dragon Warrior. Same thing as with uh, Super Mario Brothers. It was hit or miss. 
in terms of, I mean, the PCBs are going to be the exact same cutout every time. I'm pretty sure Nintendo had some sort of standard template for them. Um, so I can't really see it being too... In fact, here's Mar Super Mario Brothers Duck and Bad Dudes. They're the exact same PCB layout, so... But let's take a look at Dragon Warrior here, because... Seems fine now. When I first inserted the cartridge, it would not play at all gray screen. I tried adjusting it and got, uh, you know, corrupt graphics, but it came up just fine. And I just started wiggling the cartridge just a little bit in the slot. As you can see, gray screen, and now it's flashing different colors, which... And now all of a sudden it's working. Now I know that the Famicom doesn't use a CIC chip like the North American uh, NES and the European NES does. So that could have been just part of a check uh, from the game itself. Again, inconsistent there, but if I go back and just slightly lift it on one side... Perfect graphics. The other side is fully inserted. So... So regarding the uh, adapter itself, this is what it would look like uh, without the shell on it in the adapter. It's this side specifically that if I just slightly tilt up, the game works. I'm going to try that with Super Mario Bros. Duck Hunt and see if it's, if it's the same thing that is Bad Dudes. So I've got it pushing all the way. I'm just going to lift this side up just the tiniest little bit, like that, and very inconsistently working and not working. Messing around with it some more, it seems like with Super Mario Bros. Duck Hunt, it has to be all the way in, but it also has to be shifted completely to the right for it to make contact with all the pins correctly. So I, I, I don't know, again, if it's just some discrepancy with the PCB itself that the regular NES isn't going to have to contend with because of the way the cartridge connector was designed there, or if it's something with this adapter itself, some combination of the two. My uh, previous recommendation sticks about uh, not being able to pick one, not to not pick one up. Uh, it's kind of like a, your mileage may vary, it seems. Right now, it seems to work just fine, but if I adjust the PCB just a little bit, it doesn't seem to do anything. So, yeah, that's uh, I'm sticking with my final recommendation from the last video. Let me know. Let me guys know if you have one of these and it works fine. I know I've seen a few of you comment on the uh, first part here, and uh, I do appreciate that. And if anyone else sees this and maybe has a tip of suggestion, you know, let me know in the comments below. But that's enough for this video. I told you guys I'd do a follow up, so this is what it is. Maybe I'll do some more testing at a later date and come up with an actual solution for it. But otherwise, thanks all. I will catch you later.